Lenore County Sheriff Jackie Rogers says he can't talk about Osowski's death due to the SBI's investigation. However, he can tell us about efforts to prevent drugs from getting into the jail. Before you walk into the main hall at A.H. Bangard Elementary, be sure to grab a coat and a scarf because they've turned their main hallway into a winter wonderland. The rain is coming down. The wind is picking up. If you listen, you might be able to hear the wind whistle. It's all conditions that mean that you should stay inside and hunker down until the system passes through. Meet Penelope. She's not a person, but the boat I'm standing on right now. If you're looking for a one of a kind way to show your love, face the music. A singing Valentine might just be what you're looking for. For the past two days, the group has delivered love and song to folks in the area. I'm standing at Riverview Apartments, a community mostly made up of senior citizens in Plymouth. On Sunday morning, four people lost their home. I spoke with both officials and residents. 71-year-old Richard Duggan stopped by his old home Monday. 311C, there were some things he needed. Some friends and family came by to help looking for his medications, keepsakes, and gifts for grandchildren. My clothes, and, and I had some stuff in there for my daughter and my grandkids. That's what they put in the, in the car. There were two fires at Riverview Apartments over the weekend. On Saturday night around 7 p.m., the Plymouth Volunteer Fire Department was called in to what appeared to be a kitchen fire. Washington County Emergency Management confirmed. I, I, I smelled smoke, but I didn't think about it, you know, until the neighbors came out and started knocking on my door because I was getting ready to go to bed. And my neighbors said, get out because the place is on fire. The four residents were found places to stay for the night, just in case. So we didn't have any anybody in the units, which was one thing that we were very really thankful for. The flames appeared to be contained by 10 p.m., but not for long. Hours later, the building was on fire again. And about 1 o'clock, we got a call that all the entire building was engulfed. Now these seniors have to start over. And most of them that were there, that was everything that they owned and things they had accumulated through their lives. And... You know, to see that gone was very sad for all of them. I got a lot of people in my corner, so that's all I can do, you know. Them. Even housing's in my corner, yeah. you know, so I can go from there, you know. So I hope everything works out. I've been told Washington County Emergency Management Hazari reached out to the American Red Cross to see about getting aid to these residents. In Plymouth, Sarah Gray Bar, nine on your side. Now, so where is this all going down? Ken Kinston Hotel Apartments. Now it's a senior living community and many of the people who live there are low or fixed income. This means that when problems arise, these residents may not have the funds to fix the issue. We got a call from a concerned viewer telling us the building was infested with bed bugs. Bed bugs were the last thing the Webb family expected when checking on their Aunt Betty. When they came up to her, there was uh, bed bugs noticeably crawling on her body. Talking to other residents in the building, the family says they came to one conclusion. This seems to be an issue that is uh, building wide. Family member Danny Webb says residents can pay to have their apartment fumigated, but it doesn't solve the problem, he says. The bugs are in the walls, they're in the carpets, they're throughout the building. So when you exterminate one apartment, they just come from the other apartment. Danny reached out to the city for help. Kenston City Council Member Felicia Solomon wants to be part of the solution, protecting our most vulnerable populations. I've been in conversations um, with the new property manager during the past couple of days. Solomon had the city's environmental services inspect the dumpsters outside the apartments. Fortunately, there was no evidence um, of or sighting of bed bugs, which was good. As for the inside, they have hired a new, um, I think, pest control company um, that will now begin um, treating apartments. The, the way that I heard it is that it's not just from the responsibility of the resident to call, but that it's getting ready to be worked and embedded, I think, in the process, process is built. I have not confirmed this information with Kinston Hotel Apartments. I've called and stopped by the office of Kinston Hotel Apartments several times. 
I've made contact with the property manager who declined to comment and referred me to the regional manager, Sheldon Henman. In the meantime, I reached out to ECU to learn more about bed bugs. They live not more than six feet away from our resting places, like our bed. So they climb, they feed, they go back, back to their hiding spots. Watts says bed bugs live about a year. Adult females can lay between two and five eggs a day. Considering that, you know, every four months you would have a group of adults reproducing again. So it can quickly become very large populations. Making these pests hard to get rid of, she says. Everybody needs to be on board on when it comes to eradicating populations in apartment buildings. This is something that, that we want to keep our, our hands on, eyes and ears open. Um, and give them the chance, which it appears that they're trying to take advantage of, of making sure that our residents are taken care of. Danny's not willing to wait. We are not taking her back. We are, we're gonna find her somewhere else to live and um, everybody doesn't have that luxury. And um, so some people just have to go back into the situation. I've reached out several times to the regional manager for landmark property management, as well as the president of property management for Fitch Eirich. I haven't heard back yet. If I do, the statement will be over on our website at WNCT.com. In studio, Sarah Gray Barr, 9 on your side. Captain William Bars was training with Kinston's Department of Fire and Rescue when he got the call. When you're starting down the road and you look up and there's this big, huge black plume, up in the sky and that was like oh you know man we're going to that. Former public information officer for Kinston's Department of Fire and Rescue Woody Spencer said he had never seen anything like that explosion. I don't think you can prepare for it. You can prepare is how to help people, how to save lives like that but something that as big as the West Pharmaceutical explosion uh, I don't know a firefighter that said wow you know this is I've seen this before because they hadn't. Thick, dark smoke seen for miles around. The struggle to get to the fire. There were hundreds of people coming out, yelling, screaming, help me, help me, help me. You could see their injuries. We had to push through this sea of people that were coming directly to us because we were the help. We had to get to that building. The dangers of the building, ruptured gas lines, collapsing ceilings, unstable floors. Right there at the very edge, the jagged edge, there was a gas line that had ruptured and it was blowing fire straight up and we had to cross over the fire. And especially the smoke. The smoke came down. Uh, it got pushed down on us and it was just nothing but black. We couldn't see anything. There were a lot of unknowns that day and rampant rumors. One of the rumors was the plane hit the building. Um, there was another rumor that it was a terrorist attack. In the months after, an investigation revealed the cause, a dust explosion. There was a small dust explosion um, in a localized area and when that exploded, it shook the buildings. Dust became free and started floating from the rafters and everywhere else that dust was collected and that caused the ultimate explosion blowing off the roof. January 29th, 2003 is a day that still sticks with them. About eight or nine o'clock, uh, someone came up and gave me a bologna sandwich. That was the best bologna sandwich in the whole wide world I've ever eaten. The second biggest memorable part was, uh, you know, just everyone being there. All of the emergency services coming together um, and just clicking. We were doing, it didn't matter what department you were on, we were doing. They all pitched in, they all did the best they could and, and that's why I think that lives were saved. Any life lost is terrible, but uh, to save those that you can is what it's all about.